In the next 15 minutes, I'll show you three major scientific discoveries that completely changed how we understand T-Rex. Imagine standing face to face with this apex predator as we now know it, dramatically different from traditional depictions. First, those famous tiny arms, actually powerful limbs capable of lifting hundreds of pounds. Second, the iconic upright posture seen in museums for decades, scientifically impossible, Third and most revolutionary advanced technology has revealed T-Rex possessed extraordinary sensory capabilities rivaling modern predators with binocular vision exceeding hawks and smell detection potentially surpassing vultures. This represents a true scientific revolution that transforms our understanding of this magnificent prehistoric hunter. What if I told you that one of the most iconic dinosaur images burned into our collective consciousness was fundamentally wrong? For nearly a century, the mighty Tyrannosaurus Rex stood tall in museums worldwide. Its massive body tilted skyward at an imposing 45 degree angle, tail dragging heavily behind like some prehistoric kangaroo. This tripod posture first introduced through Joseph Leidy's 1865 Hadrosaurus reconstruction, dominated scientific understanding and public imagination alike. The image was so powerful, so universally accepted, that few questioned its anatomical plausibility. The year 1915 marked a watershed moment when Henry Fairfield Osborne unveiled the first complete T-Rex skeleton at the American Museum of Natural History. The imposing display cemented the tripod stance in scientific literature and popular culture for generations. This posture persisted partly due to museum engineering constraints. Heavy fossil bones required substantial metal supports that could only hold the massive predator in this unnatural position. Like a building constructed on a faulty foundation, our entire understanding of T-Rex was built upon this biomechanical impossibility. The scientific house of cards began to collapse in the 1970s when researchers examining joint articulation discovered an alarming truth. Maintaining this upright stance would have required multiple dislocated joints. Most critically, this position would have severed the connection between head and spine while simultaneously dislocating the hip sockets. Imagine trying to run with your shoulders permanently dislocated. This was the anatomical equivalent of what museums were suggesting T-Rex did naturally. Advanced computer modeling revolutionized our understanding by demonstrating that T-Rex's body operated like a perfectly balanced seesaw. The massive skull at one end required the extended tail as a critical counterbalance, not a dragging appendage, but an essential component of its biomechanical design. These models revealed that T-Rex actually maintained its body parallel to the ground, the weight efficiently distributed across its powerful hind limbs. This horizontal reconfiguration transformed T-Rex from an awkward kangaroo-like curiosity into a streamlined hunting machine whose body plan suddenly made mechanical sense. Modern reconstructions show how the creature's center of gravity shifted dramatically, requiring complete recalculation of its maximum running speed, hunting capabilities, and ecological role. The computer models provided even deeper insights, suggesting that T-Rex likely rested by settling its weight backward onto a specialized anatomical feature called the pubic boot, the expanded end of the pubis. This resting position, impossible in the old tripod configuration, presented a much more plausible picture of how this animal actually lived. Similar to how modern birds lock their legs in standing positions for efficiency. The horizontal posture revolution didn't just change museum displays, it fundamentally altered our understanding of T-Rex capabilities. The corrected biomechanical blueprint revealed a faster, more agile and infinitely more efficient predator than its tripod predecessor. This shift represented perhaps the most significant visual revision in paleontological history. The inaccurate museum mounts influenced generations of scientific illustrations and public representations, most notably in Rudolf Zallinger's influential mural, The Age of Reptiles at Yale's Peabody Museum. These images persisted until the 1990s, when groundbreaking films like Jurassic Park, 
finally introduced mainstream audiences to the more accurate horizontal posture, correcting nearly a century of misunderstanding about how Earth's most famous predator actually stood. Just as our understanding of T. rex's posture underwent a radical transformation, another deeply entrenched misconception has clung stubbornly to this prehistoric giant's reputation, those infamous arms. Since their discovery, T. rex's diminutive forelimbs have been the subject of mockery featured in countless memes and jokes about their supposed uselessness. Standing barely 3.3 feet long on a creature stretching 12 meters from nose to tail, they seem almost comically out of proportion. An evolutionary afterthought on an otherwise perfectly designed predator. But what if those compact limbs represent one of natural selection's most focused designs? Precision instruments engineered for a specific and deadly purpose. Think of them as nature's version of specialized tools. Not Swiss army knives, meant to do everything, but surgical instruments crafted for absolute effectiveness at one critical task. The conventional wisdom suggesting these arms were useless, evolutionary remnants overlooks crucial anatomical evidence hiding in plain sight. As far back as 1906, paleontologist Henry Fairfield Osborne recognized something unusual about these supposedly vestigial structures. Far from showing signs of evolutionary reduction, the bones displayed remarkably large areas for muscle attachment, a telltale indicator of significant strength. Modern biomechanical analyses revealed startling capabilities. The biceps muscle alone could generate enough force to lift 439 pounds. The brachialis and other muscles worked in concert during elbow flexion, creating a mechanical system with tremendous force in a compact package. The extremely thick cortical bone in T. rex forelimbs provides further evidence of specialized function. These weren't thin, brittle structures expected from vestigial appendages. They show all hallmarks of being engineered to withstand enormous mechanical stress, exactly what would be needed for grappling with powerful prey. Even the features previously cited as evidence of uselessness actually point towards specialization. Kenneth Carpenter and Matt Smith's analysis revealed that T. rex forelimbs were perfectly adapted for close quarters prey restraint, capable of immobilizing struggling victims while the massive jaws delivered killing bites. This reinterpretation solves one of paleontology's most persistent puzzles. Why would seemingly unnecessary structures be maintained through millions of years of evolution? Natural selection eliminates traits that don't contribute to survival. Yet T. rex's arms persisted with their powerful musculature intact. The answer seems clear. These were specialized hunting adaptations maintained by consistent selection pressure. Have we been looking at these appendages all wrong? What other seemingly odd evolutionary features might actually be sophisticated adaptations we simply don't understand yet? Not all scientists support the prey restraint hypothesis. Kevin Padian proposed in 2022 that the reduction in arm size might represent an adaptation to prevent injury during group feeding frenzies. Smaller arms avoided being bitten when multiple T. rex gathered around a carcass. While debate continues about their precise function, the extraordinary strength calculations have demolished the useless appendage theory. These were powerhouses capable of exerting forces rivaling modern weightlifters. The realization that T. rex arms were specialized tools forces us to reconsider how we interpret anatomical features that appear unusual by human standards. This fundamental reinterpretation illustrates a recurring pattern in paleontology. Our tendency to impose human expectations on evolutionary adaptations often blinds us to nature's specialized solutions. Features that initially appeared bizarre have repeatedly been revealed as sophisticated adaptations, perfectly suited to their ecological context. While our discussions of T. rex often revolve around its imposing physical characteristics, recent discoveries reveal that the true secret to its hunting success may have been hidden inside its skull all along. CT scans have uncovered sensory structures so highly developed they force us to completely reconsider how this animal dominated its world through perceptual advantages that would have made it nearly impossible for prey to hide or escape. Traditional paleontology 
focused on the visible aspects of T-Rex anatomy, those massive jaws, powerful legs, and intimidating size that capture our imagination. This fixation on outward appearances created a significant blind spot in our understanding, as researchers overlooked the sophisticated sensory systems critical for successful hunting in the challenging late Cretaceous ecosystem. What sensory secrets did this apex predator hide beneath its fearsome exterior? The groundbreaking research of Lawrence Whitmer and Ryan Ridgely at Ohio University transformed our perspective. Their detailed examination of Tyrannosaur skulls using advanced CT scanning technology revealed something remarkable. The olfactory bulbs and nerves of T-Rex were disproportionately large relative to its brain size. This anatomical feature suggests an olfactory capability that was extraordinary, potentially rivaling modern vultures, which detect carrion from astonishing distances. This exceptional sense of smell provided a crucial advantage in multiple hunting scenarios. A T-Rex could track prey through dense forests or complex environments without requiring direct visual contact. More significantly, this olfactory prowess expanded its effective hunting territory exponentially. Where previous models assumed T-Rex needed to see potential prey, we now understand it could detect animals from vast distances through scent alone, then approach strategically before the prey realized the danger. Was T-Rex limited to tracking by scent alone? Far from it. Kent Stevens conducted perimetry studies on facial reconstructions that yielded a shocking discovery. T-Rex possessed a binocular range of approximately 55 degrees, exceeding the binocular field of modern hawks, birds renowned for their exceptional visual acuity. This extensive overlap between what each eye could see provided T-Rex with precision depth perception, similar to how a hawk judges distance before diving toward prey, critical for timing a high-speed attack. The evidence points to a predator with a multi-sensory approach, utilizing whatever perceptual system offered the greatest advantage. Imagine a hunter switching seamlessly between tracking prey through scent trails when visibility was poor, then transitioning to precise visual targeting when closing in for the kill. Even its hearing contributed to this sensory arsenal. Analysis of T-Rex's inner ear structures, particularly its long cochlea, indicates it heard best in the low frequency range, an adaptation allowing it to detect subtle ground vibrations produced by large prey animals. This provided another layer of sensory information, potentially allowing T-Rex to monitor movements even when visual and olfactory cues were unavailable. What emerges is a radical reinterpretation of T-Rex's hunting capabilities. Rather than depending solely on brute force, this apex predator possessed sophisticated sensory tools that made it an extraordinarily efficient hunter. With hawk exceeding binocular vision, vulture rivaling olfactory detection, and acute low frequency hearing, T-Rex had multiple pathways to detect, track, and target prey with remarkable precision. This sensory sophistication explains how a multi-ton predator could successfully hunt alert, agile prey animals. T-Rex outperformed its victims across multiple sensory domains, effectively eliminating their ability to hide or escape. Beyond understanding how a single T-Rex hunted lies perhaps an even more startling revelation. The sheer number of these predators that simultaneously roamed across North America. While modern apex predators typically exist in sparse populations, new evidence suggests the late Cretaceous operated under entirely different ecological rules, with T-Rex densities that would seem impossible by today's standards. For decades, Paleontologists could only speculate about how many of these massive carnivores might have existed at any given time. The conventional wisdom suggested these top predators must have been relatively rare, similar to tigers or lions today. This assumption seemed reasonable. The energy requirements for supporting numerous multi-ton carnivores would be extraordinary. However, this long-held belief was dramatically overturned by a groundbreaking 2021 study led by Charles Marshall and colleagues. 
Through innovative statistical modeling techniques applied to fossil data, researchers arrived at a figure that transforms our understanding. Approximately 20,000 adult T-Rex existed simultaneously across North America. This represents a fundamental shift in how we conceptualize predator-prey relationships in prehistoric ecosystems. The statistical models suggest a range from a minimum of 1,300 adults to a staggering 328,000 individuals. Imagine a Cretaceous landscape where an area the size of California supported approximately 3,800 adult T-Rex, while a region equivalent to Washington DC maintained just two of these apex predators. Walking through this real-life Jurassic metropolis would mean encountering these massive hunters with stunning regularity, an experience utterly foreign to our modern understanding of predator ecosystems. These numbers become even more remarkable considering they account only for adult specimens. Juvenile T-Rex, which likely occupied different ecological niches and hunted different prey, uh, aren't included. As the study's authors acknowledge, the total population was likely much higher when accounting for these younger individuals, creating a complex ecological structure where different life stages effectively functioned as separate predators within the ecosystem. When projected across T-Rex's approximately 2.5 million year existence, the total number of individuals that ever lived might have approached 2.5 billion. An extraordinary evolutionary success story. This extended reign as North America's apex predator demonstrates remarkable ecological stability over geological timescales. Some scientists, like Mary 2022, have questioned these estimates, citing uncertainties in metabolic calculations and other factors. The original study authors acknowledge these limitations while maintaining their analytical framework remains robust. These population figures also illuminate fossilization rates. Only one in approximately 80 million T. rex individuals would typically become fossilized. In areas with denser populations, those odds improve to about one in 16,000, still remarkably rare. Despite billions of T. rex having existed, we've recovered relatively few specimens, a mathematical reality that serves as a humbling reminder of how limited our window into the past truly is. Most significantly, these density calculations force us to reconsider fundamental assumptions about prehistoric ecosystems. How could the late Cretaceous environment support such unprecedented concentrations of massive predators? The answer likely involves complex ecological relationships we've yet to fully understand. Prey populations of extraordinary abundance, different metabolic requirements, or hunting efficiencies beyond what modern analogues would suggest. And our journey doesn't end here. As we've seen throughout this exploration, the story of T-Rex remains unfinished, a scientific narrative that continues to evolve. Mark Norell from the American Museum of Natural History points out that younger generations, unburdened by nostalgia, readily absorb new discoveries that reshape our understanding of this prehistoric icon. The 2024 identification of Tyrannosaurus macraensis underscores this evolution in our knowledge. This potential precursor species with its distinct skull features reveals a more complex evolutionary history, opening new avenues for research into Tyrannosaurus origins. What future discoveries might transform our understanding next?